Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Megan Tennant and today I'm going to be talking about the writing software called Campfire Pro. And if you're already familiar with Campfire, don't skip off back into the MP4 meadows of YouTube just yet because they just dropped a massive update, so you might not be as familiar with it as you think. And if you aren't familiar at all with Campfire, make sure to stick around till the end because this software has some features that I haven't seen anywhere else. So today's video is actually sponsored by Campfire. Though I do want to note that I tried the software out before agreeing to do this video because I did want to make sure that it would be helpful to some writers out there. And it passed the test! So I'm going to be doing a demo video to highlight all of the great features that can help you in all of your writerly endeavors so you can decide for yourself if it's worth the commitment of a 10 day free trial period. So first things first, what is a campfire? A campfire is an open air fire in a camp used for cooking and as a focal point for social activity at least according to Google. But I guess you're probably more interested in what Campfire Pro is. So Campfire Pro is a writing software that helps you keep track of all sorts of writerly things like characters, timelines, character arcs, items, and more. It isn't a word processor like Scrivener, but is instead designed to help you keep track of all of that information you keep swearing you'll remember. Because spoiler alert, you're a liar. So you can use this to keep track of timeframes and character arcs as you write, but you can also use this as a series bible. So if like me you tend to forget which I in your heterochromia character had the bigger blotch of brown, super relatable problem, I know, then this software can save you. With Aletheia I made the mistake of not keeping a series bible, which meant that to write the sequel I had to go back and reread the entirety of Aletheia, highlighting every series impacting detail within it and then transferring that over to a tracking software needlessly delaying my writing. If someone had thrown this software at me two years ago, Red River might be released right now. Ooh. Don't be like me kids, use the series bible. So Campfire is a downloaded app and it is available on both Windows and Mac. So for those of you with limited internet access, this can be a huge pro. Also for those of you who can't be trusted to work in browser because all it takes is a reflexive muscle memory, control T, letter T, enter, and suddenly you've been browsing Twitter for two hours, you can unplug your internet and this will still work. So that's pretty cool. It's also available on Steam. I don't know how useful that is, but I thought it was pretty cool and I make the rules, so I'm including that info. Though if you're a gamer, that could just be a whole other level of the Twitter issue. As a side note, the new world building pack is not available on Steam, but you can purchase the code for it on their website and import that into the application on Steam, so you can still get the world building pack that way. But the extra nice thing about that is that if you want some non-sponsored reviews of the software, there are 69 reviews up right now on Steam that you can go read through. Don't giggle, that's a legit number and I bet it's sick and tired of you not taking it seriously. Though keep in mind the update just dropped, so most of those reviews won't account for the UI updates or added features. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I can control my Twitter urges about 45% of the time, and so I have a really strong preference for in-browser apps. So I was super excited to find out that Campfire is actually working on a cloud-based version of the app called Blaze, and that's going to be dropping in fall or summer of 2020. It's also worth noting that purchasing Campfire Pro gets you three free months of Blaze once it's released, and I confirmed with the Campfire team that it is going to be possible to transfer over your story from Campfire Pro over to Blaze, so you can try the downloadable version while you're waiting for Blaze, and you'll be able to move over pretty easily after it's released. Next question, who is Campfire most useful to? If you're writing 10k word short stories, you probably don't have much to track, so this software probably isn't useful to you. But if you're writing anything more complex than that, I think that there are features that can help make the writing process a little easier and maybe even save you from a few mistakes. Basically, the more complex your story, the more useful Campfire will be to you. Now let's talk pricing. Unlike approximately 99.57% of everything these days, Campfire is not a subscription-based software, but is rather a one-time fee of $49.99 for just Campfire Pro, and then $74.98 if you want the addition of the brand new world building pack. 
This means it won't pile on to the monthly reoccurring charges to your bank account that are bound to only get worse as media companies continue to decide to launch their own streaming services. This one-time cost also means that you could pop this onto your Christmas wish list and someone could just pen the activation code into a Christmas card, which is pretty cool. Or you could drop hints about wanting it, and then when you're having a breakdown because NaNoWriMo has sucked the life out of you, your significant other can get it for you and use it to distract you from your word count woes. There's also a 10 day free trial with no credit card required that gets you access to everything. And if you're like me and you start a 10 day free trial and forget about it until day nine, there is this handy section where you can request an extension. Just go into Campfire Utilities and Licensing and put down your associated email address. I'm not sure how many times they'll let you do that though, so maybe it's a good idea to only put it off for an extra five additional days after that, just in case they don't keep giving you more. Okay, now let's talk features. First things first, customization. So if you head over to view and select themes, you'll find some pre-built templates, a simple dark one, a light one, and some genre tailored ones. But if like me, pre-built templates awaken a vicious rebel within your soul, you can actually create your own. Go back to view and then right under themes, you'll find create theme, which takes you into preferences. So you could just open preferences if you're feeling especially rebellious. Then scroll down to theme and click create. That will open up all sorts of options, colors, background images, and fonts, which you can preview in this display text sample if, like me, you're so bad at seeing the differences between fonts that you didn't realize that the fonts themselves are listed in their own fonts in the little drop down. Yeah, I was creating like my third custom theme by the time I realized that. If you know worthy things about creating your own template, the body and header refer to the text color. The background image is the background to the text boxes, and the overall background is called landscape image. And it doesn't take PNGs, at least on Windows, so convert those bad boys to JPEGs. Other things you can customize include the curviness and line type for relationships and timelines, the delimiter used between pronunciation sounds, whether to show or hide the add panel button, how often to autosave for those of you who like to live on the edge and for some insane reason want the number to be higher than zero minutes. And how often to clear backups, again for those of you who like to live on the edge and actually want to clear out backups. As a side note, these backups exist to protect you from file corruption and are not easy to manually access. And if you have a corrupted file issue, you'll want to contact Campfire directly, which is super easy given the app itself has a drop down with all of these different places you can contact them including a Discord server, which is where I learned about these backups, and where you can chat with some super chill writers, so 10 out of 10 would recommend joining that. I'll link to the Discord server actually in the description down below as well. Also, life hack for more easy to access backups, just periodically copy your story file over to your favorite cloud service, and then if you accidentally delete everything, your file is still safe. Next up, let's talk characters. This feature allows you to create characters, track details, and link other things to them because basically everything in the software is interconnected, which is amazing. So you create your characters and if like me, you have a massive cast, you put those characters into folders so you can actually find them. Now, when you click on character, you get a page with some preset panels to help you come up with details, but you can completely customize these and create your own. When adding new panels, you have the option of a few different panel types, which you'll see a few more times throughout this application. Firstly, text for, you know, text. Secondly, images, also for text. Just kidding, it's for images. I know, I was surprised too. Next, we have statistics, which is set up specifically for number data, like age or weight, that you should never ask your character their weight, it's rude. Then there's list to list out things like name, gender, sexuality. Then there's references, where you can add links to characters, places, events, anything else within the software, basically. And then there's links. The references type is basically that page pointing to other pages, but the link panel, on the other hand, lists out what is pointing at your character. Note that hitting the X on these links removes a reference in the original location. So I, in my big brain glory, managed to remove all of 736's references from all of her scenes. So, you know, maybe don't mash X's without knowing what they do. Now all of the boxes can be dragged to change size and can be moved around so you can fully customize how this looks. It's also worth noting that you can export characters to PDF. They'll be aware that that turns each character into a single PDF, which can be helpful if that's the outcome you're expecting. But I was not prepared for that outcome. Remember what I said I had a big cast? 
Yeah, so my desktop is just flooded in characters. So maybe make a folder first and export to that folder like a logical person. Don't be like me and just export everything to the desktop and then periodically dump everything into a folder called junk drawer, which you have to purge once a year. Whoa, you're getting a demo and free live lessons with it. What would you do without me? Now, relationships. These are webs that allow you to show the relationships between characters with curved lines of varying colors. Each web has its own set of colors which are then linked to a type of relationship, like enemies, lovers, boss, captive, person you stalk on Twitter but have never talked to, you name it, literally, because you add the names, you can put in whatever relationship type you want. Except that last one, because there's probably a character limit or something. There is a max of 10 colors per web, but I found that this is actually helpful because more than that becomes far too confusing to follow. But of course, given the ability, we'd add more than 10. Because you just know we would. We don't have the responsibility for that level of power. You can also set a color to have directionality, so it adds an arrow for what direction you drag the line. Which is good for things like likes or hates, because those can be one directional. A fun little life hack is that if you go back to the characters feature, you can create a folder for category types, and then within that you can put characters that aren't actually characters but rather are category names, and then you can use those in the web. For example, I added divisions from Alethea so I could see who was in what division and which ones they were in in the past. You'll also notice that there are presets at the top. Relationship web is the default, and then family tree just comes with preloaded colors for family ties, and friendship comes with preloaded colors for friendship ties, all of which you can of course change and edit. I think this feature is most useful to fill out to help you identify if your relationships are varied enough, as well as helping you quickly spot specific connections. For example, if I wanted to add some conflict in my story, my relationship web could remind me that 736 is enemies with Ryan, who has a sibling tie to Nora, who has a past romance with Jason, who is currently in a romance with 736. Meaning 736 could easily mistake hostility from Nora as jealousy when in truth it could be protectiveness over Ryan. That's something that can be a lot easier to pick out when seeing the color differences in a circle of characters. The more varying the colors linking characters, the more potential for conflict. I think whether or not the relationship feature is useful to you really comes down to how you think, how you process patterns, and how much of a visual person you are. I think for some people this feature might just cause confusion, but other people might find this extremely valuable. Next up we have timelines. This is especially useful for outlining. In the past I've recommended Trello for outlining, but that was made for task management, whereas this is made for writing. And it shows. So I'd recommend that if you can afford it, you use this instead. First off we have dividers. These are great because you can use them as your skeleton breaking the timeline into acts, or even using them to add your favorite narrative structure like Save the Cat or The Hero's Journey. You can also add horizontal dividers by right-clicking, which could let you set things like intensity levels of a scene or scene importance, or some more creative thing I couldn't think of. Now you add events. You can add them right off the bat with a title and short description, and then if you double-click it will open a window where you can add tons more detail. Firstly, you have the items that show on the card itself, like temporal location, which I think means present, flashback, flash forward, dream, that sort of thing. The on-screen versus off-screen, which is super cool, and magnitude. Then you have other details like characters in the scene, locations, full description, and image, which you can use as a thumbnail so that when you hover over the item, it shows the image instead of showing the description. You can also customize the border color, which is super helpful for multiple POVs. Especially because you can instantly see if you're playing favorites and maybe giving one POV too much screen time. Alternately, you could use the border color to denote scene type and instead put the POV name in the temporal location slot. Or you could put scene type like fight scene or love scene. Get creative with it. And just like with characters, you can add custom panels here. You can also manually link these items like the relationship web, which means you could separate out the POVs and have one above and one below if you wanted. And you can change the color of the lines as with the webs, which you could use for any number of creative things I cannot currently think of. Maybe colors denoting how much time passes off screen between scenes, such as hours to days to weeks to years. Or maybe a color to signify that you still need to add scenes in between those two scenes to connect them. Also, as a side note, pay attention to the order of scenes on the left side of the screen and drag and drop to make sure it's correctly ordered because it doesn't reload based on the lines drawn between cards and that's the order in which they'll appear in your character arcs. Which brings us to character arcs. Now in your timeline you need to make sure to add characters to every scene they're in because that's how this section knows which scenes to list for each character. 
When you open up your character arcs, your character list will already be loaded in. And for each character, you'll find all of their scenes listed at the top of their page, and each scene will have a page of panels, two of which will be preset to emotional changes and physical changes. You can also add as many of your own as you like, which is great for tracking anything from what a character discovers in a particular scene to what basis they've hit with the love interest. You can use that as evidence in your argument with your significant other when they insist that a non-sex scene was a sex scene. They, they never took their clothes off. Super relatable issue, I know. And then you have the add trait section, which is a super cool part about this feature, which I don't think I've seen in any other writing app. Here you add traits that persist across all scenes with that character, and if you click the trait, it'll show you a graph of it over time. This forces you to look at a scene and ask yourself what, if anything, has changed. And here's the big kicker. If no character arcs changed in that scene, the scene probably needs to get cut or at least altered. This can also help you catch places where maybe your character is changing too quickly or not changing enough. Next, we have World. Now this works especially well if you have maps for your world or the artistic ability to create maps for your world, of which I do not, but this is where you track locations. If you don't have a map, just add a thematic background instead. You'll likely have to tweak the scale, which you can find by right clicking. And now you can start adding locations. As with the timeline cards, you can double click to open details. For basic info, we have type from universe down to room, color for creative purposes, and then even transparency which could be useful for denoting the importance of a location or so you don't cover important map features. And then we have abbreviation, which I think is especially useful if again you have an actual map and don't want to cover as many useful map features. You have the ability to add as many panels as you want and link all sorts of things from cultures to other locations where you have a relationship line to describe why they're linked. The preloaded options are resources, history, geography, and weather, but you make the rules and can add whatever panels you like, including images. Because of the nature of the boxes being able to expand, you could also put a large box down first to represent a building and use other boxes layered over it to represent rooms, potentially allowing you to map out a whole building. Keeping in mind the first box created is always the backmost layer, so if you think of this after adding locations, you'll want to find the first one and edit it to become your building. And of course, now that you have these locations, you can link them in other sections as well. Speaking of which, it's worth noting that you can often add items straight from the link windows if you don't want to pop over to the appropriate tab. Next up, we have the encyclopedia. This is where you can track anything and everything you like by creating custom entries. This is the predecessor to the world building pack. So if you have the world building pack, I'd use that instead. Otherwise, this is super straightforward. You make categories, add items, add custom panels or link elements. Things like magic systems, items, languages, species, you name it. Literally, because it's a freestyle zone. So now, on to the new meat. The world building pack. This is a new add-on for Campfire Pro and is like Encyclopedia, but way more specific because you now have 8 categories complete with presets. Species, cultures, languages, religions, philosophy, systems, magic, and items. Each item comes with preloaded panels tailored to that item. And you can, of course, add your own custom panels, remove panels, edit panels, all the same as with the other categories. One of the coolest items on this list is one that I don't get to use with any series I currently have planned, and that is language. It breaks it down into phonetics, dictionary, grammar, and pragmatics, half of which are words I understand. In all of these tabs, you're set up with a default table and can add rows and columns, and it has things like word, pronunciation, type, and definition. The next one that stands out is systems, where you have a page similar to timelines, and can add and interconnect things like characters and items, though the cards don't expand as they did in timeline. And then you can switch to info tab. I'm not entirely sure what this was created for, but I'm sure you can find some creative uses for it. And then there's magic, which gives you three different tabs to split up your info. Rules, guidebook, and history. Plus some cool sections for info such as costs, source, limitations, the sorts of things many people forget to add to their magic system, and because I think those people should be slapped on the face with a soggy waffle, I greatly approve of these panels. And then the other category things are pretty standard. They just have preset panels to make your life a little easier, and like everything else, these can be linked in all of the reference spots. And that's it! It isn't perfect and I hit a few bugs here and there, but it's a helpful little writing application. And I really think they'll be able to stretch out their wings with Blaze and reach all new heights, so I'm really excited to see that launch. And again, purchasing Pro will get you three free months of Blaze, and you can transfer over any stories from Campfire Pro to Blaze. 
So I think this is a good starting point. Until then, I still think that the timeline features and the character arc features on here are enough to make it worth the cost. And then the character tracking app and the new world building pack are pretty standard for tracking information and I think they can definitely fill the role of a series bible. So give it a try with the 10 day free trial and see how well you mesh with it. I will link the website down in the description down below as well as their discord. And that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and as always I will see you in the next video. Say